Dan Perry here, and here's part nine of our TCP IP basics, uh, reserved IP addresses. This is actually a re-recording of the original because I discovered I had uh, had an error in my slides on it, so uh, I'll delete the old video and replace it with this one. Uh, in this one, we're going to look at reserved IP addresses and how they're used. Um, some of the IP address ranges uh, are reserved for special purposes. Uh, they can't be used as normal IP addresses for communicating. Uh, some of the ranges are reserved for private addressing. Um, one of those that's reserved that can't be used for a normal uh, IP addressing is what's called the loopback or loopback range. It's actually a class A size network going from 127.0.0.0 to 127.255.255.255 and it's reserved for testing. Now there's really only one IP address in this range that's ever used and that's called the loopback and that's 127.0.0.1 and it's used to test your internal network communications on your TCP IP stack uh, it's uh, one of the first things you should do when you do troubleshooting on it. Now, part of the reason the entire range was reserved for that was back when they were creating the rules and things, there were was no thought of everybody being on uh, TCP/IP. So they said, "Well, you know, we can we can leave a whole large." class A range just for testing purposes because we're never going to run out of IP addresses. Well, guess what? We are. Um, there is a global broadcast network and that's the network zero uh, range and it again uses the entire range and it can't be used in uh, for general IP addressing because of the again the way it's used. The zero address is the uh, global network address. At the other end, the uh, 255, 255, 255, 255 is the global broadcast address, and it can't be used by a host as well. There are also a group of private addressing, and uh, right now there are between 5 and 6 billion devices on the internet, but remember, there are only about 4 billion IP addresses. And then there are large blocks of those IP addresses that aren't used. The class D and E are not used for normal communications. D, remember, is the multicast address. E is reserved for uh, research and development and testing. Every device on the internet has to have a unique IP address, or, or rather, if they had to have a unique IP address, we'd have been out of addresses a long time ago. So what they did was they assigned some ranges as private addresses. These private addressing ranges allow us to use uh, the uh, those IP addresses internally in our network, we can have hundreds and thousands of machines on the private addresses, but to the outside world, all those uh, machines would appear to be one very large or at least one machine that's generating an awful lot of traffic in the outside world. Let's say we have a lab with 50 devices. It could appear to the Internet as one, so now we've got 50 machines that look as one. You may have a school with 1,500 devices in it, and by using it, uh, one address may not be enough, but maybe 10 or 20 addresses on the Internet. So, so they share, say, 10 public IP addresses for all 1,500. Most of us have a home network today where we're connecting our PC, probably our maybe our cell phone or an iPhone or an iPad, an Android device as well at home. <clears throat> In my case, the kids have computers, I've got a laptop, the wife has a laptop, and we connect to the internet through a router and to the outside world it looks like there's one computer. We all share one public IP address even though there's a half dozen computers uh, and devices inside the house. The, there are three private addressing ranges. There's a class A, B, and C ranges, and those ranges can be subnetted. 
Uh, we'll cover subnetting later as needed so we can take that large Class A network and divide it into a bunch of smaller networks. A and B networks are usually subnetted. Uh, Class C networks are not, uh, with, with maybe the exception that Class C networks in a lab environment, which we do do in our uh, uh, networking labs, uh, for hands-on training, we will subnet them, and also in learning to subnet, it's often easier to learn on a Class C. The private ranges are the 10 range, uh, 10 to 10, 255, 255, 255. There's a single network there. The Class B range uh, is a, a 172.16 to 172.31 range, and in it, there are uh, 16 different networks. Again, they can be, because they're large, they can be subnetted just like the A. The class C range is the 192.168 range, and that gives us 256 possible networks, uh, private networks. Now, those can be repeated. There are hundreds and thousands of companies using class A uh, ranges internally. There are millions of people using Class C ranges internally. Most of us are using the same 192.168.0.0 or 192.168.1.0 networks. Next time we're going to start looking at our subnet masking.